So let's uh, start with the afternoon uh, presentations, and um, I'm really pleased to give the floor now uh, to Marcus Krebs, who's been very active in uh, the past few months on uh, the GRM uh, uh, group, and in particular, he's going to share some very interesting presentation on uh, uh, how uh, the international supply chains are critical in fighting the current pandemic. Uh, Marcus, you have the floor. So uh, I've been part of Unity GRM uh, for some time now, good, good six, seven years, I guess. And I work with uh, many private organizations as well as governments. Uh, my background is originally finances, but also now trade, trade finance, obviously the, the brilliant work Unity GRM and also Mars are doing in the trade surveillance space. And as part of this, I work with a couple of startups and scale-ups in the data visualization space. Now, this particular screen you can see is a tool provided by a company I've been involved with for a good two years now called uh, Coriolis Technologies. And what they have is they have something called uh, a multilateral platform. Uh, and as a company, they offer data as a service, analytics as a service, and platform as a service. They use open source available uh, data and information, particularly in the trade space, uh, then deploy uh, uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms to fill some of the gaps in the data sources they mainly use is, for instance, United Nations Comtrade, the OECD, Eurostat, uh, and altogether, I think it's around 40 or so data sources. Um, as part of that, you can see they have got goods, and goods are typically available on a monthly basis. Services and digital trade data at this point are only available at a um, annual level. And the problem is uh, this information is not all being provided, so it's difficult getting hold of, and a lot of it is still lacking. You will see this in a minute. Um, as part of what Coriolis has been doing with multilateral, they have um, developed and looked at supply chains, uh, not just for COVID, but across uh, uh, all countries. And at the moment, this database, and this is only something that is possible using cloud-based analytics, because the database itself has got about 21 billion rows. It's about five tetrabyte at the moment, and there's about 180 million companies' data sitting uh, behind that. As part of this, we have done some uh, COVID supply chain work, and I've built a dashboard here to give an idea of what this looks like. When I click on that, it should generate it uh, live and pull the data in from the backend database. Hopefully, that shouldn't take that long, because I'm only looking at a couple of uh, sectors, and the sectors I'm looking at is at a HS6 code. Now, uh, most of you will be familiar with the commodity codes um, we are using, and you can see here two codes that are related to the COVID-19 supply chain. One is this one, which is electrical machines and apparatus, and ultimately uh, ventilators fall into that particular category. The second one is machinery filter for filtering and purifying gases, uh, and that is also related to ventilator and ventilator supply chains, because ventilators are being fed by oxygen tanks, and they require, to some extent, complex filtering mechanisms. Now you can see, and, and before I go in some of the data, I've got to warn you a little bit, because um, the reason uh, the reason you can see some anom anomalies here in the data is part to COVID-19 and part to that the data is simply lacking. Uh, so whilst I built this on monthly data, some of the data is not even up to uh, January or February yet. So bear this in mind. But what we can do is we can use uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms to use current data, apply trends, and then understand how they correlate and how they work together. What you see at the moment is what we call the import default view. And you can see from here that the top importers in these two commodity areas, both ventilator related, is the US and then Germany, and then uh, China and Japan. If I wanted to switch this, I can do that. I simply click on the export view, um, and it shows me who are the top exporters in this space. Uh, the charts should rearrange, and you've just seen that. You still have seen this anomaly here and, and the drop in, uh, in the supply of these products, but the 
key exporters for this is China, Germany, and the US. If you don't like the view here with the bubbles, we can change this to map charts and so on. What I wanted to show you with this is the underlying data has now been used by some of the NGOs and development organizations we are working uh, together with. And one way of doing that is by uh, pulling in the company data and looking at the global value chains that are sitting behind that. If you look at this from a value chain stage perspective, you can see that the global, uh, global value chains here are primary, intermediary, final, and distribution. And uh, at the moment, this is done for all countries. Uh, we haven't selected a specific uh, uh, company, and it is done for ventilators, surgical metal masks, respirators, gowns, goggles, face shields, and aprons. Now, all of this, what you're seeing here, is a pilot at the moment. However, this pilot has fed into various development organizations' projects, and one uh, in particular went live a couple of weeks ago. Now, I think it was with the Asian Development Bank. So, the Asian Development Bank is part of uh, WHO and also collaboration with the United Nations has put a massive big scale program together in uh, terms of uh, COVID supply chains. As part of this, they have uh, commissioned a study on uh, supply chains for COVID and worked with Coriolis Technologies to better understand how this correlates. And one of the ideas was they want to understand, uh, given the, the views I showed you, how supply chains have been impacted by COVID. They want to understand which companies are mostly responsible for the build of ventilators. And I have worked on with the data science team on decomposing ventilators. There's about typically seven to 800 uh, component parts in a ventilator, including metal sheet, shielding, PCB, electronic components, filter elements, all sorts of things. So it's a highly complex product, really. And when you want to understand what the underlying supply chains look at, you need to break down all these commodity HS, uh, SIC sector codes and understand what the primary products are, the raw elements that go into that and how a ventilator is built. Now, as part of this supply chain map that the ADB developed allows you to do both location-based analysis, but also product-based analysis. So assume you are uh, based in China or you're based in the US, you're interested in the ventilator supply chain and what goes into that. And you can see here again, these global value chain stages. We can look at all stages or we can look at the individual components. If you look at the components for those, um, if you go at a product perspective and we look at components for for ventilators specifically, you can see what goes in there, uh, particular at, uh, you know, at either raw material stage, you can see it's power supplies, it's gas supplies, lithium ion batteries, or some of the components. So they need alarms, they need compressors, they need filters, flow regulators, uh, obviously works with oxygen, but not just gas intake, also gas outtake. So there's cleaning elements in there, software, obviously and switches. So there's this whole range of elements that go into ventilators specifically. And if you want to understand either from a product perspective, who is responsible for those, or from a country perspective, who is responsible for those, you could then go onto this tool like, and you could select a distribution of ventilators in a the US, for instance, and if you do that, it will provide you with detailed information of US specific companies that are providing uh, ventilator supplies uh, across across the states. You get the website for the company, you get the city where they're based. You also get the financial information at higher level and you get employee related information. And uh, somewhere here, there's a button where you can download this. If you click that button, you'll be presented with an Excel list of all this information. Now the ADB um, made this publicly available because the idea is also information on bank advisors. If you want to keep up as a country, your COVID supply chain running, you need to understand who are the producers and who are the consumers of both the primary parts as well as the raw elements and the final distribution. Only when you have got that knowledge and insight are you able to make informed decisions. 
And that comes a little back, bit, a little bit back what uh, Kevin, our chair, mentioned this morning. This is not about risk management. It is about managing risk, and it is about managing uncertainty. You will only be able to make informed decisions if you understand the patterns of global trade, if you understand the bottlenecks, uh, what's holding this back, whether that is because there's no financing available, whether that is because a lot of lockdown measures simply have impacted all these global manufacturers of these highly you know, complex, to some extent, products. And even if you look at uh, face shields and goggles from a product perspective, there are certain elements that go into those. So the components for a face shield is there's certain padding around here, there's a mainframe, there's other padding, there's the face shield that is made out of different sheeting materials. You only need one or two elements out of that whole supply chain falling away, and you will not be able to supply your hospitals and your GP surgeries and your medical practitioners with personal protection equipment, which is to some extent what we have seen as part of this pandemic. There was not enough supply available. There was no capacity of these producers and manufacturers to providing that stuff. And there was no intelligence at a high level government, uh, you, you know, information level available to reaching out to these companies quickly and say, we need you to do this. I'm aware of uh, car manufacturers, for instance, in Africa, uh, as well as in other countries uh, that decided uh, together with governments, instead of shutting down these production facilities, also in the UK, by the way, they have repurposed these production facilities to either build ventilators, mm -hmm. use some of the cutting machine machinery equipment that is available to them to build things quickly. But you only can do this if you are available of uh, the supply chains that are impacted by pandemics such as this one. And as part of that, I'm, I'm very grateful and honored having been able to present to Unity and Mars uh, what is happening in this space. And I think it's very, very important that you all keep up that important work to make sure that we learn our lessons coming out of the pandemic, but also use real life intelligence and data that is these days available to make better decisions uh, and, and ultimately help saving lives. So thank you very much for that, uh, Lorenzo, and for the time. That's greatly appreciated. And I, I'd like to really thank uh, Marcus. I thought that was extremely insightful and I've had the opportunity to browse uh, this database on my own, as he had already shared it with us in the DRM meetings. And I think there's enormous potential as well for market surveillance authorities to use uh, that, um, that tool, uh, because of course it would give them leverage to understand if the companies that are purportedly yeah, purport uh, selling that equipment are legit companies or they're not. Uh, because if uh, they've never traded on such equipment, uh, well, quite probably uh, they're, not, uh, they're not legit and, uh, and they're um, uh, just uh, trying to use opportunities and exploit opportunities for, uh, for fraud as the markets are, of course, very volatile and, and, very, uh, and, and trading very intensively in these, in these products now. So uh, thank you. Are there any questions for Marcus?